Hello. Today I find myself on the confluence of the Maumee and Auglaize Rivers in Defiance, Ohio. Located at this important and strategic river confluence, and in fact, directly behind where I'm standing, is the remnants of Fort Defiance, a 1790s fort. Not a lot remains of this fort today, although the earthworks are still mostly present, the palisades are long gone. However, they have done a lot with markers to show us where everything used to be, give us something to take a look at. So, join me. Right here at the confluence is a nice marble inscribed map of this area, showing Fort Defiance and the city of Defiance, Ohio, along the Maumee River, the Tiffin River where it merges, and the Auglaize River, as well as uh, the location of the War of 1812 Fort Winchester, which is just immediately south of here. Well, take a look at that in another video, although there's not a lot to see there. As we stand along the Auglaize River, which flows from the south to the north, one thing you notice is this pole, which is located a good ways above the river, as you can tell. The stripes on it mark the flood levels of the uh, worst floods here. This is an area that is very flat and prone to flooding. The red is from the 2005 flood, and the yellow is from the 1982 flood. The blue is the 1913 flood, which completely devastated this town. So as we continue our walk, I'll tell you a little about the history. Uh, when the American pioneers first attempted to settle the area north and west of the Ohio River, following the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, the Indians, aided by the British in Canada, fought valiantly and fiercely for their homes here in the Ohio country. They set the frontier aflame, as the uh, papers back then said, and it required the efforts of three American armies to break the Indian resistance to uh, American occupation. The first army in 1790, under General Josiah Harmer, met defeat at the Miami town, which is now Fort Wayne, Indiana. The second in 1791, under Governor Arthur St. Clair, was surprised and repulsed with severe losses on the banks of the Wabash in uh, Fort Recovery, uh, which is south of here in Ohio. Finally, in 1794, the United States sent General Mad Anthony Wayne, who had a decisive victory at the Battle of Fallen Timbers. This uh, 1795 battle placed the Indians under the control of the United States. The Northwest Territory, uh, which was formed, became later the states of Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Minnesota. And uh, it was this fort that placed this area firmly in the hands of the United States and opened it up to white settlement. So how did Mad Anthony Wayne defeat the native tribes that two previous armies had been unable to defeat and conquer? Well, there's a story to that, of course. Uh, so August 8th, 1794, General Mad Anthony Wayne, after marching through swamp and mud from Fort Greenville, marched up here, landed on this site in the center of Indian country, and ordered a fort built. He said, I defy the English, the Indians, and all the devils in hell to take it. And because of that, they called it Fort Defiance. Interestingly, because it's along the Auglaize River, most of the soldiers just called it the Glaze or Fort Glaze. Regardless. From here, General Wayne marched against the Indian forces along the Maumee Rapids and defeated them at the infamous Battle of Fallen Timbers. Fort Defiance then became an important link in the chain of military outposts in the Indian lands. At the time of the War of 1812, Fort Defiance was repaired and garrisoned together with the newly built Fort Winchester just about a mile south of here as an American base of operations against the British and Indians in Canada. Uh, following the end of the war, the fort was abandoned, the timber was repurposed, and we were left with what's here today. Coming to the end of the park here, you can see these nice benches. This is actually the very historic town library, which I think deserves a quick view past these beautiful benches. 
you can tell it's a very old central building which has been added on to. You can hardly even tell where the new section starts and the old section ends. So most of this fort was turned into a park by the city in the very early 1800s. Uh, then it was fixed up by the Works Progress Administration in the 1930s. So some of this work, like these very telltale WPA stairs, dates to that time. At the top, commanding a beautiful view over the Auglaes and Maumee confluence here, is a pair of cannons. These are, of course, not cannons that were original to this fort from the 1790s or the War of 1812. These are, in fact, Civil War era cannons built in 1847. Here's the first and there's the other one. These cannons actually have a really interesting history. These were in North Carolina in the coastal defense at Fort Fisher, which was captured by the Union. And they've done a few really good movies about it if you've never heard of that. Anyhow, in the 1890s, the U.S. government decommissioned the cannons and gave them to the Grand Army of the Republic post here in Defiance, Ohio. And now they overlook this peaceful river valley. It is estimated that about a thousand Native Americans lived in this immediate area. There were several large villages along the rivers. Uh, most were Shawnee Indians. There were also a lot of French, Canadian, and British traders, including George Ironside, who built a two-story trading post in what is now downtown Defiance. There were fur traders and trappers and natives all living together for a time. Uh, this here, only tombstone on the site, is of Johnny Logan. In 1786, Captain Benjamin Logan of Kentucky captured a young Indian boy during a raid across the Ohio River in the Machachak, I'm not saying that right, probably, Machachak tribe towns of the Shawnee Nation. Upon returning to Kentucky, Captain Logan made the 14-year-old boy part of his family uh, until he was forced by a treaty to return him to his native people. Uh, however, Johnny Logan, as he was named, became a friend of the United States and served as a guide to many American soldiers through that time, as well as trappers and traders. Following the declaration of war against England in 1812, he actually joined the American service and was employed by the Indian agent John Johnson at Fort Piqua to help evacuate Ohio women and children living near Fort Wayne. The siege of that fort was lifted by Kentucky and Ohio troops under General William Henry Harrison, who later went on to become President of the United States. However, at that time he was just General Harrison. Anyhow, he directed Logan, Johnny Logan, to take a small party ahead of Winchester's left wing to scout the area near the rapids of the Maumee River, where he encountered a larger enemy force. So his party retreated and was accused of disloyalty by the second-in-command general, General Price. Angry at this, Logan left and took Captain Johnny and Brighthorn, who were two other Shawnee chiefs, with him to prove his innocence. They were captured near Turkeyfoot Creek by British sympathizer Potawatomi Chief Winnemac and during their, they, there was a whole big kerfuffle. During this, they escaped. Four of the enemy, including Winnemac and Elliot, were killed. Brighthorn and Logan were wounded, but Logan's wound was severe, and he died on this spot, November 25th, 1812. American Army officers, who had been completely convinced of Logan's innocence, buried him with full military honors here, in Fort Defiance. He is the only Indian in the state of Ohio to receive that recognition during the War of 1812. So as we make our way around the earthworks that remain from the fort, as I said, the Palisades long destroyed, uh, mostly through some severe floods which seem to happen here in Defiance about every few decades, but you can see the earthworks still very much there. 
This is where the East Block House troop quarters were located. Nice view from the Block House. And as we come around here, this is the location of the powder magazine. And over here, the location of the bake oven. I don't know if the stone that I see in the hill was original to the fort or added in later. It does seem to be at the top of the crest and could well have been part of the foundation. I'm not exactly sure on the history there. This is the South Block House, including the preparation area with the fireplace located in the corner right on the street. And as you notice, alongside the retaining wall is a series of stones, which I imagine are actually part of the fireplace from the corner of the original block house building. Coming in where the split in the earthworks is, we enter through what was originally the main gateway of Fort Defiance from 1794. And we get a view of this remains of this small but very important fort. Over on this side is the West Block House, 22 foot square structure, two levels, again with corner fireplace. And again, there are the stones all the way around the rectangle that remain, as well as what appears to be a little bit of a staircase over here. And coming up to the north side is the remnants of the cross section of a trench. 16 feet wide by eight feet deep, dug on three sides of the fort. Earth removed from the trench was used to form a six foot high earth parapet next to the fort's wall of pickets and the exterior sides of the blockhouse, which was then reinforced, of course, with a picket log fence. Now here, more in the middle, is the location of the officer's quarters. And as it mentions, Enlisted men just slept in the blockhouse. Uh, the final plaque I've noticed over here is the North Blockhouse, where the artificer and blacksmithing activities took place. The nice view of the Maumee River. This culvert is labeled as Wayne's Water Supply Trench. comes in right behind the cannons that we saw before. One fascinating piece of this fort is this old flagpole located as it always had been in the center of the fort. And according to the boulder, and boulders never lie, this is the Fort Defiance Flagstaff. All land north to Canada surveyed on the baseline running from this point. And while boulders never lie, occasionally the brass plaques affixed to them tell a truth which was more in keeping with the stories told at that time and less true with what we know today. This plaque from 1925 tells us how the hostile Indians were defeated without loss of blood and how General Wayne advanced against the Indians and signally defeated them in this strategic battle in this important military post, and how he convened the largest ever council held on the American continent, which of course was convened for purposes of allowing them to surrender. So he did defeat the Indians. There was a battle, therefore the loss of blood part, I don't know where they're getting that from, although he did say that in his reports. Uh, he probably was just referring to his own soldiers. Anyhow, uh, the defeat was military, but also civil. Uh, the Indians had planted large fields of maize, corn, that extended for miles in all directions along the two rivers. It was the custom of the Indians to plant beans and squash among the stalks of the corn. They called this the Three Sisters. Some of these fields were destroyed by Wayne, and a portion of them were saved to feed his troops and mounts. After his victory at the Battle of Fallen Timbers, August 20th, 1794, 
Wayne ordered his troops to destroy all remaining crops and Indian structures for a distance of 50 miles on either side of the Maumee River, forcing the Indians to come into the fort and rely on aid from the British to survive the war. The Treaty of Greenville was signed by General Wayne and the Indians in the summer of 1795 as a condition for allowing the natives to return and plant crops again. So you can do what you will with that information. It is always tricky when it comes to history. As we know, the victors are the ones who get to write the history, but given enough time and people who are interested in learning the truth, we can pick out all the sides and form a more complete picture of what happened in a location such as this 225-ish years ago. I'll leave that up to you guys to decide your thoughts on it, although I'd love to hear them. If you want to write some comments, I'm more than interested to have a little discussion going on about the Battle of Fallen Timbers and Fort Defiance. Um, definitely some more videos I'd like to do on the Indian Wars and the War of 1812 in this region. Uh, there were a lot of informational plaques in this fort, uh, which I am going to put still photos of at the end of this video, as well as uh, a couple of maps I found of the fort itself and maps of the forts in the region. Uh, hopefully you stayed and watched till the end. I definitely appreciate it if you did. If you haven't already subscribed or liked the video, please do so. And uh, give me thoughts and suggestions on where else you would like me to visit and vlog. Until next time, take care of yourself and thanks for watching. built on this exact spot, obviously, because that would be stupid if it wasn't.